Yo, what is up guys, Grey here, and today we have got our draft analysis for Season 4 of the APA Academy. In Season 3, we managed to make it all the way to the quarterfinals, I believe. Um, yeah, the playoff system, I think, was a little bit different, but we made it to quarterfinals. We went 9-1 in the regular season. The only game we lost was uh, when we brought memes against Platinum Howler. Um, other than that, we had a really, really good season. Um, with a solid sand core and just a generally really well built team. Arguably like my favourite team I've ever built. Um, but my BPR team currently is definitely on par of it, if not like above it. But season 3 we did really well. However this season we would like to go a bit further. We would like to <laughs> try and win it all if we can. But um, it's going to be a little bit different this season. Um, instead of having the usual kind of top stuff, um, standard kind of draft league. The admins decided that this season was going to be a low tier league. So how that works is effectively they've taken out all of tier 1 um, and the vast majority I would say of tier 2. I think there's a few things that are arguably still in tier 2. Uh, if I could look at the um, the board, uh, things like Galarian Sloking um, you could argue is in tier 2. I think like Porygon 2 is arguably tier 2 as well as Moltres. Um, things like Swampert, again, like it's arguable as to whether they're tier 2 or not, but um, they're really good. A load of Ninetales as well being in there. Um, yeah, so lots of things that were kind of on that tier 2, tier 3 precipice were like the uh, top sort of mons in, uh, in, in this season. So instead of seeing like your standard stuff going first, um, you're going to see uh, things like Galarian Sloking, things like Zygarde 10%, uh, Tornadus Incarnate. They're the kind of things that are going first this season. So, with that said, we'll get straight into the uh, the team. The way this draft worked, we had 20 coaches, and uh, it was just kind of you know standard snake style as you always do. And I think we had 100 points to spend, and the top tier was 16 points. Um, of course, just working its way down. Um, you had some like little cup slash NFE things in tier like the one point tier, um, and then yeah, your top top stuff in the 16 point tier and we managed to get fairly lucky I think in that we were fifth overall in the draft order which is not amazing in fact it's 16 coaches not 20 16 so fifth is pretty good um, we'll definitely take that it's better than we were in UPBA where we were unfortunately right in the middle at least we do have a little bit closer to the first pick um, of the season and that meant that we could pick up something really solid because there was enough things in that 16 point tier that, you know, whatever you pick up in that tier is going to be really, really good. So uh, we were able to pick up Blaziken as our first pick. And this is something that I wanted to use in a couple of leagues that I'm in at the moment. Um, I'm currently in PTL, which uh, is my own league. I, it's not on YouTube, but it's a showdown league. I really wanted to draft it then, um, but it got taken away from me. So uh, I had to change plans there. And then UPBA. I was, uh, sorry, my dog just squeaked a toy and it scared the life out of me. Um, yeah, in UPBA, I kind of was looking at it at one point. I was thinking maybe I wanted to draft it, but again, um, it didn't end up happening. So, you know what? Third time lucky, let's get uh, Blaziken with our first pick in the APA Academy. This thing's going to be really scary in low tier. Um, the t dual typing of fire and uh, fighting with the coverage that it possesses is going to be really, really difficult for things to switch into. Um, base 120 attack and 110 special attack means I can run either special or physical. I can be choice scarf, I can be choice banned, I can be not choice locked at all. Um, there's so many options with Blaziken, it is a very solid mod with decent defenses as well. Like nothing amazing, but um, considering you're taking away a lot of wall breakers, uh, 80, 70, 70 is actually fairly usable. Uh, 80 base speed tier as well, like with the amount of stuff that's been taken out, it's actually a really like fairly decent speed tier. For this, uh, for this season and really Blaziken is just kind of going to be the start of what is going to be a very very offensive uh, fire water grass core so I kind of looked at this and I was like I could like, start picking up other things but I really just want to like solidify my initial core and uh, Blaziken which of course is just Blaze it's not speed boost speed boost isn't allowed in regular draft league let alone in low tier um, but yeah, Blaziken is just a really scary, mainly going to be physical attacker. So I wanted to partner it with a good special attacker. Um, I was kind of looking through and honestly something that I've wanted to use for a while and had an incredible speed tier um, for this season is Inteleon. Um, Inteleon is 
a very potent special um or either wall breaker or you could also call it a setup sweeper um in the its ability being sniper it also has torrent of course um, with the sniper and focus energy you're able to then um, effectively crit every move that you go for which makes it really really powerful with that base 120 speed as well you're going to be outspeeding a lot of things in the tier so uh, Inteleon looks absolutely terrifying. Again, it gives me access to U-turn. Uh, base 85 attack is it's not the greatest, but it's certainly usable for like a momentum move. Um, very, very frail, but at the same time, that's not necessarily its job to switch into stuff. Uh, base 125 special attack with a choice specs with less things to actually switch in. It's going to be doing a lot of damage to a lot of things. Um, again, it has the coverage that it just kind of needs. Like It doesn't have tons of coverage. But it does have things like Ice Beam, Air Slash, Dark Pulse, U-Turn, um, and then obviously the Water Move as well, which is generally enough to do what it needs to do. Um, especially with Blaziken being able to kind of break open uh, like bulky waters and stuff. Uh, Inteleon will be able to take advantage of that and um, yeah, Blaziken really appreciates the grass types that Inteleon brings in. With U-Turn, of course, I'm able to get Blaziken in pretty freely against the grass type switching. Uh, the only thing that really, like I said, is an issue is water types, which Blaziken can break through or Inteleon could break for Blaziken. Um, I did want to make sure that I had a way of dealing with um, bulky waters. And honestly, the best thing on the board that I could see to really deal with that um, is going to be Rotom Mo. So I pick up my Fire Water Grass Core to start off with. Uh, Rotom Mo, I think, is going to be fantastic in this tier because Electric Grass is really good coverage as it is. Um, 86 is a decent speed tier, good bulk as well, and a good special attack stat. Um, we can run defensive, we can run specially defensive, we can run choice scarf, we can be uh, defog, we can just be like a uh, bulky pivot set, we can be, I don't know, there's, there's so many things we can do. Nasty plot as well, we've got all the status as well with Toxic, Thunderwave, and Will O Wisp. There's a lot that Rotom can do, and I think it's a really nice team option for uh, where the team is currently at. Um, it really is a good check to the water types as well, so I can always pivot this in. And the first three mons on my team have all got pivot moves that can kind of allow each other to switch in for free. And that's going to be really, really handy, um, especially with the rest of my team. Like, I start to kind of piece things a little bit better afterwards. But, yeah, Rotom gives me another special attacker, which means that really Blaziken's role is going to be much more of a physical attacker this season. But at the same time, I'm really happy with this pickup because I've wanted to use Rotom Mo for a while. I've used it at the start of UPBA Season 1, which as you probably, if you know how long ago that was, it, it was a long time ago. Um, I don't believe I've used Rotom Mo since. So yeah, finally getting to use Rotom Mo again. And you're kind of going to see that part of my team uh, or part of my draft is that it's things that I either haven't used before or I haven't used in a long time that I just really wanted to use. And... Um, I feel like these three to start off with, uh, Rotom, Inteleon, Mazikin, it's just a really nice kind of way to start off with my draft. And my my fourth pick is something that I did not expect to last as long as it did. How this managed to make it to round four without anybody picking it up in low tier, like I, I'm surprised this was even allowed at all. It's going to be Porygon 2. Um, so Porygon 2 effectively just acts as a one-man defensive core effectively in this team. Um, being able to uh, be able to take hits on the physical or special side pretty easily with the Eevee Light. Um, realistically, the only thing that is necessarily worried about is going to be fighting types and knockoff, um, as well as like Toxic as well. Toxic can suck for Porygon, but um, yeah, Porygon 2 is just fantastic in low tier. Um, I was surprised that it was allowed to begin with, but it, it does make some kind of sense. Like, I don't think Porygon 2 is rated as highly by others who haven't seen Shroom Raver use it, because Dave can just... That, that man knows how to use Porygon 2. I mean, he is absolutely absurd, but... But, yeah, Porygon 2 is just a really, really bulky mon. Um, with base 105 special attack and the analytic ability, it does mean that we can actually... Um, we can use it as a special wall breaker as well. Um, certainly in lower tiers, it's going to be able to do much more damage than it would in regular. And with the Eevee Light as well, we're doing so much damage. Uh, Trace is obviously a very nice ability to be able to uh, get things like Regenerator on Glitter and Sloking. Um, like, just looking at the top tier stuff, like you've got Natural Cure on Celebi, 
um, regenerator sloking, like regular sloking. Uh, you have got things like, sorry, I'm just kind of looking through uh, Prankster on Tornadus. You have got like Infiltrator Noivern, Cabalion. I can't remember what Cabalion's ability is. I'm blanking. Oh, it's justified. Um, so that's not necessarily as, as useful. Um, Flygon gives me Levitate as well. There's so many different things that uh, Porygon can use just from the, that's just a, like the top tier ones as well. That's not necessarily me going through and looking at other things and uh, the abilities of lower tier ones. Porygon 2 with Trace is just fantastic. It also has another ability in download which can be very helpful as well. Being able to switch in and ba uh, boost my special attack, hopefully, um, against certain things that I know are going to have a higher, uh, d higher defense stat. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Um, higher special attack stat, uh, special defense stat. I was stumbling on these, but yeah, Porygon just really, really useful in this, and it gives me just like a blanket check to a lot of things on my opponent's teams. Of course, I can play around um, with my initial ones and just kind of play around with these. Uh, fighting types, we are pretty effective against them. We don't switch in particularly well against them at the moment, but we're also pretty, effect like, pretty good at just kind of revenge killing fighting types. So, uh, Porygon 2, just a really nice bulky mod, and again, with Teleport, another mod to give me momentum, and a lot of things want to switch out against Porygon that just can't do enough damage to it, so, um, yeah, Porygon 2 looks fantastic, I think, on his team, and for me to be able to pick it up, uh, round 4 is incredible. However, we have used quite a lot of our points to be able to get these mods, um, especially with my 5th pick as well. Um, we still had to, look in, like, had to look at a bit more budget picks, but with my fifth pick, I'm actually going to pick up regular Duraludon. And we followed my UPA season, I did pick up uh, GMAX Duraludon. After initially picking up GMAX Center Scorch, I actually traded um, post draft for GMAX Duraludon. And Duraludon looks like a really interesting mon in um, on my team. It gives me a good stealth rocker, um, good physically uh, physical physically defensive mon. Um, takes some of the pressure off of Porygon 2 for being physically defensive. Uh, unfortunately, they are both weak to fighting, which does give me a little bit of a fighting weakness, but it also gives me um, two thirds of my Dragonsteel Fairy Core all in one go, um, which is both a blessing in disguise. Like, it means that I'm. Uh, my Dragon type is not weak to Dragon, it's not weak to Fairy, but it does also mean my Steel type is not resisting those two attacks. So. It, it is a pros and cons, but at the same time, a lot of the dragon types, because bear in mind this is low tier and there's not many dragon types to begin with, a lot of the dragon types that were any good had already gone at this point. So I had to pick up, if I wanted a good dragon type and I wanted a good steel type, I kind of had to pick up Duraludon because that was just the mon that was the best for those two types. And I'm not unhappy with it at all. I think Duraludon is a fantastic mon. Um, of course, this special defense is not great, but we do have uh, Porygon 2. To be able to switch into anything that's not like a um, special uh, a special fighting type, which, you know, there's not many of those that exist. Um, Porygon and Duraludon, other than that, really form a nice partnership. Um, of course, Duraludon is going to be my first stealth rocker on the team. And to this point, I had no hazards. And with all of our momentum moves, we kind of just want those hazards to rack up. And make it really difficult for my opponent to keep constantly putting those pressure uh, pressure on. Um, also, Steel Dragon is just a really nice typing. It's something that um, when I was going through my UPA run, I started realizing just how nice it is to have a Dragon type that can hit Fairy types for super effective damage. Like, sure, you're going to be taking neutral from their hits, but it's also just really, really nice to uh, be able to hit um, any Fairy type with super effective damage with a Dragon type. So, yeah, Dragon. Is my fifth pick and at this point I think I'd used up more than like two-thirds of my budget I'm pretty sure at this point I'm on like 60 points used or uh, sorry 65 somewhere around there I want to say looking at the rest of my mons it may even be 70 points um, so uh, at this point I kind of decided I'm gonna just go for a really top heavy draft and I'm gonna of course try and pick up the pieces that I need for this team but at the same time I'm probably just gonna go slightly uh, top heavy and then try and look at things that I think are really good value and speaking of really good value I think my next pick is incredible value and at nine points I was able to pick up Scyther and Scyther in a low tier league with base 110 attack and 105 speed 
It's absolutely fantastic. Um, it's four times weak to rock, but at the same time, my team currently does not care about uh, rock type, uh, rock types in general. Um, doesn't care too much about fire types either, which is another weakness it has. Uh, flying types, I wouldn't say is too much of an issue. My grass type is not weak to it. It's actually going to be hitting back for good damage. Uh, Duraludon resists it. Porygon is not necessarily too worried about flying types. Not many of them carry uh, good coverage for Porygon. So uh, having those weaknesses was not a big issue for me. Um, Cypher gives me a nice defogger. It gives me a fantastic physical pivot. And uh, just a generally really good physical attacker. Uh, Technician boosted dual wing beat does so much damage. Um, the ability to raise my attack with Swords Dance, I can pivot with U-Turn. I can be a bulkier set with Roost and Toxic and stuff like that. There's a lot of things that Cypher can do, and I think it for 9 points, I just couldn't turn it down. I just think it was way too good for that tier. Um, it does give me my second Defogger, or I guess third. Like Technically, Blaziken does give me a Defogger, but I don't know how many times I'm going to be running Defog on Blaziken. Um, Rotom Mo, of course, is a much more solid Defogger, and then... Uh, Scyther gives me another option as well. With heavy duty boots, it means that we're not taking the 50% uh, from rocks. And with the technician, we're still doing a lot of damage. So, uh, also gets access to things like knockoff as well, which uh, to this point, I don't think I have a knockoff user at all. So, always nice to have a knockoff user, get, especially where things are going to be running a bit more on Eviolites. Um, in these lower tiers, there's going to be more Eviolite users than there would be normally. So having that is always going to be really, really nice. And yeah, Cypher for 9 points, I think is just a fantastic pick. It's just an absolute steal. And speaking of absolute steals, my next pick is going to be Sandslash. Uh, Sandslash was 6 points. And honestly, I think it's incredible value. It gives me Stealth Rock, it gives me Spikes, it gives me Rapid Spin. It gives me a Ground Type with base 100 attack, which is somewhat usable in this tier. Um, it also has like access to things like Stone Edge as well, so you can run... Uh, Edgequake fairly effectively. Uh, it's not a too bad speed tier as well, very physically bulky, so it gives me another option that's, um, as well as Duradon that's not weak to fighting. Uh, also, I should mention with Cypher, it's a times 4 resist to fighting, which is incredible for my team. So I <laughs> really, really needed that. Um, but Sandslash also gives me a good physical check. Um, should I be going up against a fighting type that's particularly scary and I don't want to run uh, too many fighting weaknesses, I can. Uh, bring Sand Slash physically defensive and it's going to be able to do a job. Um, Spikes is the main reason I picked it up. However, having dual hazards and the ability to remove hazards all in one go is absolutely amazing. Um, really enjoy Sand Slash as a mon. I think it's very underrated. And at six points, honestly, I think Sand Slash is incredible. Um, <laughs> again, this is another mon that I know that Shroom Raver loves and is incredibly good at using. So. At this point, we're pretty much just drafting a, a Dave team. But <laughs> uh, yeah, Sandslash, I think it's just going to be a fantastic mon. And I'm very much looking forward to using it. Um, but at this point, we don't have a fairy type. And I was looking at what was left. And honestly, the choices were pretty poor. Um, I think even things like Clefairy at this point are gone. Like Clefairy being great. Um, Aromatisse was something I was looking at and really wanted. But I think it went after my Psy uh, Scyther pick. Or bef no, it actually went before my Cypher pick, if I remember rightly. So I was going to pick up a Romatisse on that turn. However, unfortunately, we were. Um, it didn't make it back to us. So um, we were kind of made to deal with potentially not the best Fairy type. And I looked at what types I still needed. I needed a Psychic and I needed a Fairy. And it was between uh, this one and Mr. Mime as to whether I which one I picked up. And honestly, I felt like Mr. Mime didn't give me as much value as Galarian Rapidash would. So, yeah, we're picking up Galarian Rapidash. Honestly, this is not going to be coming every week. Um, unfortunate for my fairy type that it's not the most viable. It's also not a dark resist, which I really kind of wanted in my fairy. But it does give me another times four fighting resist, which is fantastic for my team. Um, it's not the bulkiest. I'll give that, like, it's not the bulkiest thing for a times four resist, but I think Cypher is much better in that kind of role as a bulky um, switch into fighting types. Uh, Rapidash just gives me another fast mon with uh, good offensive typing and Psychic Fairy. I actually really like it. Um, great coverage as well. I think it's things like high horsepower. It gets, I believe, Wild Charge. I could be wrong. Let's just have a quick look. Uh, it does get Wild Charge. It gets Throat Chop. Um, gets Mega Horn, Low Kick. Like, there's some good use here. It also gets Healing Wish. 
which is something that can be really, really useful. It does have a potential um, special side as well with Calm Mind, uh, but I don't think we'll be using that as much. Um, but who knows? Who knows what the matchup will, uh, matchups will bring? But Glare and Rapidash just kind of gave me another uh, fast mon. Another thing that could actually potentially be pretty good. If you consider that Dragapult's special attack is base 100, and with choice specs it does so much work. Um, you consider that like, I can run this choice banded with the same attack stat. Excuse me. Um, it could also still do a lot of work, and I'm kind of excited to use Glare and Rapidash. I, I want to see if it actually can do something in Draft League. <laughs> But um, with our next pick, I really wanted to pick up another like solid fighting resist. Um, I didn't have a dark type, didn't have a ghost type, so Sableye just made so much sense. Um, having that prankster potential Will-O-Wisp is amazing for my team. Um, just the typing in general, I think that Sableye and Porygon 2 especially form a really, really nice core. Um, being able to switch into the fighting type moves is always going to be appreciated. And uh, honestly, like... Save Light only being weak to Fairy. Fairy is one of those types that doesn't tend to, um, or, or doesn't usually have fighting coverage from uh, like for most of them. So Porygon Save Light could be a really annoying core for teams to do, to break down. Uh, Prankster with things like uh, Will O Wisp, Recover, um, Toxic as well. I can just use this as like a bit of a stall breaker. I can use it as a. Um, like a stall demon myself as well. Um, not not because of his ability stall. I don't think I'll ever be using that at all, ever. Um, but it does have some good options. It does have access to things like Encore to prevent setup. Um, I mean, I can run Nasty Flaw, I guess. Access to Pain Split, which again, I don't think I'd want to run that over Recover, but you never know. Um, Prankster Sleep uh, Rest Sleep Talk could be pretty interesting to run. Uh, Prankster Sub. Um, Prankster Trick is another option, as well as Taunt. Not the greatest stats in the world by all means, but that's not what you run Sableye for. I think Sableye um, for 5 points as well just gave me a lot of things on my team that were really, really nice. Um, some nice kind of um, it's a spin blocker as well as just kind of generally nice uh, typing uh, synergy with Porygon and things like that. And yeah, I, I think Sableye is just going to be one of those mods that we can bring a few times a season and it can really put in some work. So yeah, excited to use uh, Sableye. And at that point we had two mons left to pick up, and we had two points left. So I had basically blown the entire budget at this point, um, but I was very aware this is what I was going to do. I was hoping to be able to pick up these two one point mons as my last two picks, because I felt like they were really good value, and really gave my team um, some good use. And with low tier picks, I always feel like you need to pick up things that honestly can give your team some kind of value. and. Coughing, surprisingly, gave me a really decent value. Um, really good physical defense with some really good abilities as well. Um, stench is not amazing, but neutralizing gas and levitate can be really effective in the right situation. Um, just the uh, solo poison typing is something that, again, another fighting resist, uh, very physically defensive. Um, I just It's really nice for my team. I think it's just going to be a really good... Um, like Toxic Spiker, it's just an annoying mod to deal with. Like it doesn't have necessarily that many things to play with, but like even if it came in and mementoed and gave me opportunity to set up like a Swords Dance with Blaziken or a Focus Energy with Inteleon or Nasty Plot with Rotom, um, it gives us that option. Um, we have access to Toxic Spikes, uh, Will O Wisp, Toxic, those sort of things, um, and again like decent coverage for what it is: Dark Pulse, Flamethrower, Fire Blast, uh, Shadow Ball, Thunderbolt as well as the poison move, like it, it's not terrible, especially for one point. I felt like it was one of the better options, especially because the one point here was effectively just little cut mons. I felt like coughing was something for my team that really kind of gave me some value. And another thing that really gave me value in that one point here was Swirlix. Um, the fact this was in one point was actually a little bit crazy to me because I think the like Sash and Burden set as a lead with Sticky Webs it's going to be really, really valuable, especially in certain matchups where they maybe got the speed advantage. Um, having these sticky webs up could be really, really big. As well as the ability to run like Sash and Devil with the Unburden means that we can actually, um, we can actually probably whistle something down to one HP off the start. And like trading a Swirlix for anything else on my opponent's team is absolutely going to be worth it. Um, it's not really got too much else 
as a role in this team. I could be running it like a bulky Evia Light, uh, like, what's it called? Uh, a bulky Evia Light set where I could set up rocks and also use it as like a, a switch into things like fighting types and into dragon types. But I'm not sure if that's really what I'm going to be using Swirlix uh, for too much. I think definitely going to be using it as sticky web, but it has other options as well. You never know, I might run Belly Drum one week just because. Um, I could run Cotton Guard sets um, with Eviolite, that's going to be tough to break. Uh, yeah, there's other things they can do for sure. It could be a Wish Passer. If I, <laughs> if I really wanted it to be a Wish Passer, it could be a Wish Passer. Um, gives me dual screens as well. Is that dual screens? No, just, just light screen. For some reason I thought I got dual screens, but it doesn't. It's a cleric for the team as well, which um, is always going to be nice. Like You always, I feel, need a cleric on your team. So, yeah, for one point could go a lot worse than Swirlix and Coughing. I think they definitely give me some value and considering I went super top heavy and I was very aware that I was going top heavy, um, I'm glad I was able to pick up two mons in that one point tier that actually give my team some kind of um, utility. So with that, that's going to be my team. Um, I'll just scroll back through so you can see what I had. Um, I missed out Dryad on there. Um, I'm really happy with this team. Um, considering I was just kind of picking things up that I wanted to pick up, uh, it wasn't a case of like I wasn't going to have synergy or anything like that because I was just picking up what I wanted to pick up. Um, it definitely got good synergy. I think I'm really happy with my Firewater Grass Core. And I can't believe I picked up Porygon 2. And things like Cypher and Galarian Rapidash, I'm actually really excited to use because I think they're going to be really good in this low tier. But let me know what you guys think of the team down in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy the video, then please do leave a like and subscribe. So you don't miss out on the entirety of the APA Academy season. And until the next one, have a great day, guys. Peace.